Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. Hudson Valley CC offers aviation maintenance program. Raysbeck Aviation High School wins Gamma Design Challenge Award. ATI pilots picket Dayton Air Show. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly program dedicated to future aviators and aviation professionals. Airborne Flight Training is brought to you in part by King Schools. King Schools has been leading the effort in producing expert aviation training programs and computer-based learning software for over 50 years. Find out why pilots love King Teaching at kingschools.com. Now let's get into today's stories. Hudson Valley CC offers aviation maintenance program. The idea of offering a training program for aviation mechanics and service technicians is finally coming to fruition at Hudson Valley Community College in Troy, New York. The 12-month training will take place in a hangar referred to as HVCC West at Albany International Airport in Albany. The official name of the facility is the Aeronautical Technology Institute, which is about to receive FAA certification as a Part 147 Aviation Maintenance Technical School. The story began in 2021, when Phil Calderon, CEO of Albany Airport, got word that the aviation maintenance program was being discontinued at Champlain Valley Educational Services in Plattsburgh. Calderon contacted HVCC, which acquired all the equipment from the Plattsburgh program for $1.5 million through combined financial support from a federal Perkins Grant, HVCC Faculty Student Association, and Hudson Valley Community College Foundation. HVCC said that in a survey of regional airlines at KALB, all of the carriers responded that their needs will exceed 10 additional aviation technicians per year for the next five years. In the capital region of New York, Albany, and its surrounding areas, aviation maintenance and service technicians can expect an average salary of $70,000 or more per year. After the break, FAA recruiting pilots for research study. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. FAA recruiting pilots for research study. The FAA is recruiting pilots for a paid research study, which it will carry out at AirVenture in Oshkosh 2024 this July. If you are planning to attend, the FAA would like you to sign up. The study is approved by the FAA Institutional Review Board, which regulates research involving human subjects. Pilots who are eligible and participate will receive $300 to $500 in the form of a prepaid gift card. The amount is dependent on the pilot's medical privileges current at the time of participation. Members of Lakeland Aero Club to compete in Junior Gliding Championships Five members of the Lakeland Aero Club will travel to Austral Poland to compete in the Junior World Gliding Championships. The event is sanctioned by the Federation Aeronautique International World Air Sports Federation and will be held from July 13th through 27th. The team's glider pilot will be Stephen Tellman, and his support crew will consist of Quest Hips, Dallas Hurd, Kenneth Turbeville, and Matthew Turbeville. Tellman is the youngest glider pilot in the history of American competitors, and to qualify, he was required to compete in regional contests and earn badges. WestJet Mechanics put strike on hold. Maintenance mechanics for the Canadian low-cost airline WestJet have called off their threat of a strike for the time being, as both sides agreed to return to the bargaining table. However, WestJet had already preemptively canceled more than 50 flights affecting several thousand travelers. The 72-hour strike notice filed on June 17th was prompted by WestJet's early request to the Canada Industrial Relations Board to create a collective bargaining agreement via binding arbitration. 
The notice was announced by the Mechanics Union, and WestJet said it began canceling and consolidating flights. CAE opens new Gulfstream-specific trading facility. CAE has kicked off operations at its first Gulfstream-focused business aviation training center, a base that will one day produce hundreds of freshly qualified pilots and technicians for the brand's platforms. The new facility was built a spitting distance away from Gulfstream Aerospace Corp headquarters in Savannah, Georgia, with room for up to four full-flight sims as their student numbers grow. The first, a G550 FFS, began operating last January, and the second, the G280 FFS, will be ready for training starting in July. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Raysbeck Aviation High School wins Gamma Design Challenge Award. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association announced that the winner of the 2024 Gamma Aviation Design Challenge is the team from Raysbeck Aviation High School in Tukwila, Washington. Taking second place was the Porter High School team in Porter, Texas, and the third place award went to the Gonzaga College High School team in Washington, D.C. More than 60 high school teams representing 28 states from around the country vied for the awards. The competition consists of two phases. The first phase follows the Fly to Learn curriculum, during which teams learn the basic principles of flight and aircraft design that adhere to national STEM education standards. The second phase is applying that knowledge to modify a virtual aircraft design to win a virtual fly-off using the X-Plane flight simulation software. The mission for this year's challenge was to modify a Cessna 208 caravan to fly as quickly and efficiently as possible from Homer to Seward, Alaska. The goal was to maximize speed and efficiency to successfully navigate between two remote locations with high terrain. Teams were judged on performance parameters, a checklist of steps in the demo flight, and a video submission describing what the team learned from the process. The Raysbeck team's design mods involved a streamlined fuselage, low two-section wings with fast airfoils, and higher horsepower. After these messages, ATI pilots picket Dayton Airshow. Welcome back. ATI Pilots Picket Dayton Air Show Air Transport International pilots started their picket at the Dayton Air Show, hoping to drum up some notoriety given their employer sponsorship of the event. The pilots aren't too happy with ATI, believing that, quote, a career as a pilot at ATI is getting increasingly difficult as ATSG management fails to recognize the value they bring to the overall success of the airline, end quote. The Dayton Air Show was a fine spot to picket, giving the pilots somewhere to hang out on a Saturday afternoon and reach a base of aviation enthusiasts that would never otherwise become privy to the intricacies of airline labor. ATI pilots are unsurprisingly discontented with their pay, a historical trend judging from any conversation with former ATI fellows, and a multi-year negotiation that's gone nowhere. Those unfamiliar with ATI should know they account for a good chunk of air cargo operations for Amazon, meaning a strike could really hit some prime shopping addicts hard if things get that far. Both Air Transport International and the Union have been at it for years now, and in mediation since 2023. The Master Executive Committee say that they haven't made, quote, any meaningful progress on big-ticket issues, including compensation and retirement, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.